Good evening. Hello, everyone. Glad you're here with me. If you can see me and hear me, let me know. I, um, I will wait a minute and let Facebook announce that we're live, and I'll also check my Facebook page to make sure we are good to go. Yep, it looks like we're live. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> um, thank you all for joining me here tonight. I'm excited to be here with you. I am just pulling up the IWM page so I can kind of watch for comments. Facebook doesn't, kind of makes it difficult now to see the comments. And not sure why they did that. Oh, hello, Lynette. Hi, Joanne. Welcome to prayer. Good to see you here tonight. I'm excited to be here. I um, had a hectic day today. It was really some a day of unexpected things. I don't know if that um, rings true for you today, but I, I meditated on what I was going to be praying for this morning, and I spent a good deal of time just thinking and praying about... Um, what the Lord would have me to focus on tonight for prayer. And um, I feel like he gave me something, although, you know, life happened today. And now I feel like I'm having to just settle my heart and settle my spirit and be ready for this now. So God willing, that will happen in just a few moments. But I'm glad to be here with you tonight. I'm glad to share in conversation with the Lord. That's all prayer is. It's conversation. It's talking with God. I think sometimes we make it so complicated, like we have to have a, a, a special language when we um, speak to the Lord, but it's just a conversation. He wants to talk to you, and he wants you to talk to him. Amen. Um, I am going to be praying about a couple of things tonight um, after I pray through the armor of God. That's what we're going to be focusing on tonight, Ephesians chapter 6. Um, the team, the IWM team next week is going to John 317. We're excited to be doing that and looking forward to the time with the team and with the ladies at John 317. So we're going to cover that in prayer tonight and ask the Lord to um, use us for his glory, to be a blessing to and an encouragement to the women that we're going to pour into for a weekend. So we'll be praying about that tonight. We'll also be praying for Dr. Linda Belugo. She's headed to the Philippines on the 24th, and she asked... IWM to cover her in prayer. So that's exciting and that's an honor to be able to pray um, with our missionary friends and um, cover them as they travel. She's going to work with about 120 missionary pastors and their families and provide medical care for them, which is something they can't really afford or um, get access to in many islands on the Philippines. So um, we'll be covering her in prayer and asking God for a greater reach. Amen, Joanne. Yes, it's a conversation with the Lord. Um, and then thankful for how the Lord works. A friend of mine, I don't know if she'll be watching tonight or not, but she contacted me and um, told me about a need in Africa this past week in Ghana. And the need was 500 girls needed hygiene kits. And um, IWM jumped into action 
and we provided a thousand dollars for those hygiene kits this week for um, girls in Ghana, women in Ghana. So praise the Lord, and that those monies I believe will also be used to help with um, widows um, who need uh, assistance with food. And so I praise the Lord that we were able to be a part of that and work with a missionary who I truly believe in. Um, Johnson and Lydia Asari. Um, it was great to partner with them this week and have a conversation with them online. It had been a while since I had talked to them. And so it's so nice technology these days it just opens the doors for us to have quick access now with our missionary partners. I love that. Um, God is faithful and he um, knows how to make those divine connections, right? Amen. So tonight, I want to pray into the armor of God. And I'm going to take a sip of water because I took some supplements just before I came on. And I feel like they're hung up here. Thank you for that. I feel like they're going down now. <laughs> Sorry. So today I chose the armor of God because this has been a running theme lately in my life. Um, God just keeps pointing the scripture out to me in different ways. For instance, all of a sudden the women in our church are studying the armor of God together. And then um, this morning, I heard a message on TV um, along the same lines, the armor of God. And not only that, at, at church last weekend, it was talked about in whether, either in the service or maybe in a conversation with some, I don't know, it's come up so many times the past week that it's really gotten my attention and God has started to really initiate um, something in my spirit um, concerning the armor of God and how important it is. And so today I want to read through Ephesians 6, and then I just want to talk a little bit about what the armor is for, and then we're going to pray about it. So Ephesians 6.10, if you have your Bible, you can follow along with me. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Notice that it says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not our own strength. Put on, dress yourself up, slip into the clothes or the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the plans of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against a person that's bugging us. Our wrestling is not with that person that's driving us crazy, that person that's persecuting us. Our wrestling is not with a person. You need to understand if there's someone in your life that is constantly being a thorn in the flesh, I would look at them and love them and pray for them, but know that probably the enemy of your soul is behind it, driving them to do the things that they are doing. I can't help but think that Paul's um, pa Paul never says what his thorn in the flesh is, um, but I can't help but think that maybe it was a person. There was something that kept him humble, right? And so I, I think oftentimes God uses our relationships to keep us humble. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness. Notice that it says it's not one, it's a whole host. Spiritual hosts 
of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up, pick it up, pick up your armor, pick up the armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, having done all to stand. Now let's continue to read for a second. <clears throat> stand therefore, girded, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. Notice that, praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. Yes, wear these weapons, but pray always. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. <clears throat> Notice that it says perseverance. Perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We must push ourselves, right? We must push ourselves to stay in the fight. We must persevere and pray and not give up even though darkness seems to surround us. We must stand when we don't know what else to do. The Bible says with stand, which means stand up against, be on your guard. Be ready to take your battle station. And when you've done all you can do, just stand. Because God wants to do the rest. And for me, Paul goes on to say, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You know, this, this really challenges me because Paul was in prison when he wrote this. Not only was he in prison, he was chained to a guard. Can you imagine, <laughs> can you imagine being chained to a guard and writing this message out, writing this letter out and looking at that guard and telling yourself, I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. I'm wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. So Paul had to remind himself that it was not about the guard. It was about what the enemy was trying to do to his head, his heart, his body his feet. He was in chains. I mean, you think about that for a second. This man was writing this out while he was in chains. So he was very much aware of what he needed for protection. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about that tonight. You know, first of all, in the first part of this um, scripture portion that I just read, <clears throat> We are reminded of our adversary. Ephesians 6, 11 says, excuse me, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the plans of the devil. The devil is real. The devil is your adversary. The devil is not a fictional character. He baits you. He hates you. He dangles the things in front of your face that will tempt you and cause you to slip and fall. Johnson, hello, brother. Welcome. I'm so glad you're with us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the missionary I was just talking to you about that IWM was able to partner with this past week. I'm so glad you're with us, Johnson, and glad you're praying with us tonight. 
So you need to understand the enemy of your soul hates you. He hates the image of God. He hates anyone created in the image of God. His plan is a destructive plan for you. The Bible is clear that he has plans. He says, so that you can stand against the plans and the evil schemes of the devil. The other thing about the enemy that you need to know is that he is patient. He studies you. He knows your habits and he is strategic in his attacks. He knows what will shake you and he will use those things to shake you. And I'll use a for instance. Many years ago, the enemy kept using the same person over and over and over again. And I thought it was interesting that that person would always show up with an issue every time I was about to do a big women's event, either overseas or in the U.S., caring for our missionaries, working with missionary partners, it never failed. This person showed up like clockwork for years just to undermine, just to cause problems, just to make my life difficult. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, the first few times it happened, it worked. I would, I would become shaken. I would become disturbed. I would not necessarily handle it correctly. But then one day, yes, Miss Linda Scott, thank you, prayer works. Um, one day, the Lord told me in my spirit as I was praying for this person and asking God to give me grace and mercy, asking God to help me forgive, um, the Lord said this to me. Why does the same trick of the enemy keep working on you? And I said, who, me? And he said, I'm talking to you. Why does the enemy get to use the same trick on you every time and you fall for it? Well, after the Lord pointed that out to me, I set out to not be shaken anymore after that. And guess what happened? I became prepared. I became ready for the attack to come. Not from that person, but from the schemes and the plans of the enemy. And you know what? That person never shows up anymore because it doesn't work anymore. I look to the Lord now for victory. I prepare with my armor. I put my armor on daily and I get ready for the fight, whatever that might look like. It's not a person, it's a principality. Can you say that with me? It's not a person, it's a principality. The Lord wants us to love each other, care for one another. Just remember, if someone's doing something to get under your skin, it's not a person, it's a principality especially if it's something to shake you, especially if it's something to disturb you or to cause confusion. Just remember, Satan is like a cornered animal right now. He knows his days are numbered and he's doing all he can to kill, steal, and destroy before God comes and chains him in a bottomless pit. We have the victory. Calvary gave us the victory. Amen? Amen. We don't have to fear any evil. The Bible says, fear no evil, for I am with you. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. He's with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So here's what the Lord said to me this morning as I was reading about the armor. He said, Autumn, suit up. Suit up. Get ready. And that's what I want to say to you tonight. Suit up. Get ready. We are in the darkest times 
since I can remember. We really are. I don't ever remember dark times like this in my whole 53 years of living on this earth. And it's easy to become shaken in this day and time, but we have a King of Kings and we have a Lord of Lords and he gives us everything we need to walk victoriously before him. And the first thing he gives us is the belt of truth. Believers need to put on the belt of truth. The belt of truth is our integrity. The belt of truth helps us to walk in that truth, to wear that truth, and to live his truth before ungodly people, to be a godly example. If we can't walk in our integrity, we don't have nothing. If we can't walk in his truth as a believer, as a Christian, we have nothing. We have nothing. So the belt of truth is one of the most important pieces of the armor of God. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth of the word of God must be living in us and must be walking with us every day. It prepares us for the battle. Jesus used the word of God to combat the devil in the wilderness. What did he say? It is written. It is written. It is written. And Satan could not do anything with the truth. He had to flee. Amen. He had to flee. Oh my gosh, that just makes me so excited. And it's, I can just feel it welling up in me right now, that truth, the power of the truth and how we get to live out that truth, how God entrusts us to walk out that truth every day, that he would trust us with it. That's beautiful and that's powerful. You know, be careful of the small things. Integrity is a big deal in this day and time because it's hard to find a person of integrity now, right? Then he goes on to say, put on the breastplate of righteousness. And when I think of righteousness, I think of purity and I think of holiness. And what is the enemy of purity and holiness? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. And it's so easy to fill our hearts and minds these days with filth and garbage. You know what? Satan fears a holy Christian. Satan doesn't know what to do with a righteous, holy, and pure Christian living before their Savior. Satan does not know what to do with a believer that has gone through the refiner's fire and has come out on the other side as purified gold. Then he goes on to say, Put on the shoes of peace. Slip into the shoes of tranquility and peace. It's hard to believe that peace is a weapon. But again, if the enemy cannot disturb you and you're wearing the shoes of peace, you're walking in the peace that passes all understanding, the storms of life don't shake you, the problems of this day and age don't turn your head from the Lord. You are entering into God's peace every day. The peace of, that passes all understanding is obtainable. And he wants to help you wear the shoes of peace. You know, sometimes... I look at certain people and I know what they're going through and yet they're praising the Lord on Sunday at church. I know that many, some of my friends are facing serious health challenges and yet on the praise team at church 
in the altars praying on Sunday, not laying in their sick bed, but getting up and going to church, standing. That's what the Bible says. Stand, withstand. I'm watching some supernatural things take place in the lives of some of my friends because they are withstanding. Sometimes we just have to make the decision to just stand despite what the doctor says, despite what the checkbook says, despite a broken relationship, despite that wayward child. We got to learn how to withstand. Oh, the, this one's one of my favorites, the shield of faith. Do you know how big the shield of faith is in biblical times? It was, it was huge. It was from the head to the feet. It was a huge shield that was ready to combat, was ready to block the weapons, the fiery darts coming at them. What is the opposite of, a, of faith? It's doubt, right? It's doubting. You know, not too long ago, I was um, helping in the altar with the altar workers, and I was praying um, with some different folks in the altar. And I was, before I came to this one family to pray for them, the Lord said, pray for their faith, because they don't have faith. They're here but their faith is weak. And so that's what I did. I went over to this sister and I prayed for her faith. I prayed God would give her the faith to believe that he was going to answer her prayer. Because the Bible says we only need the size of a mustard seed in order for him to move mountains. We have to take our shield of faith and hold it up and be ready for Satan to try to plant seeds of doubt that God is going to take care of you, that God is going to take care of your children. The shield of faith blocks those seeds of doubt that the enemy tries to hurl at us, the fiery darts. Listen, the shield is a place of certainty. When you hold that shield up, Nothing can hit you. It is a place of certainty. It is a place of deep faith. You are pretty much saying, you're my God and I'm going to stand and I'm going to fight and I'm going to withstand the evil plans that the enemy has for me because you have promised in your word that you will walk with me through the fire and you will not let the water take over. And so, Lord, I'm going to hold up this shield of faith and I'm going to block every dart of doubt that the enemy might throw my way. I love the helmet of salvation. We all need the helmet of salvation right now. Amen. Amen, Susan. Welcome. I'm glad you're here with us tonight. The helmet of salvation, the helmet of sanity. The helmet that keeps our mind stayed on Christ. The helmet that helps us take our thoughts captive. The helmet that helps us praise him in the dark times. I had a friend once tell me, you know, Autumn, it's a sign of spiritual maturity when you can praise the Lord through dark situations. Well, that's what the helmet of salvation does. It gives you the peace of mind and knowing that God can do anything. And we should just praise him. That helmet protects our minds. That helmet allows us to go deeper with him. That helmet helps us recall scripture when we need it. That helmet helps us live out those scriptures and walk out those scriptures every day. Yes, amen, glory, hallelujah. So suit up. 
suit up with the armor of God. Do it every day. Remind yourself of what it does for you. And take a stand against the enemy of our souls. And I love this last part, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you know that the sword of the spirit is the only offensive tool in the armor? Everything else is defensive. Think about it. The helmet protects the head. The breastplate protects the heart and the torso. I mean, the, the shoes protect the feet. The belt protects the waist. But the sword of the spirit is the only one that's the offensive weapon against the enemy. It's the one we take to battle. It's the one that is sharper than any two-edged sword. It helps us to live a holy life, a life of integrity, a life, a life of victory. I, I don't know about you, but I just want to see more and more believers come into the full power of the Lord and understand that they have victory already. And there's no scheme of the enemy that can take that away. We have the victory. We have it. It's, it's in our arsenal. It's for us to use. It's for us to stand every day. But then he goes on to say this. Now that you understand what your weapons of warfare are and how they're to be used, pray. Pray. Pray with, pray with intention. Intercede. Draw near in the spirit, watching, waiting, looking for him, persevering after him. And not only that, but pray for all the saints. We all need prayer right now in these times we're living in. We all need encouragement right now. We all need the strength to keep our armor on. I had a friend tell me recently, he came up to me after a prayer service recently and I had um, said something along the lines of, I'm praying for those who have laid their armor down, who are battle weary, who are tired, who have lost their strength. And he literally got up and ran to the altar. And I didn't know why. And later he told me, he said, I was one of them. He said, I laid down my, my armor. I was tired of fighting. And I knew what he and his wife had been through. And I knew that what he was saying was serious and true. The enemy had wore him down to the point of giving up. But praise God, he made it to the altar and he got up from there with a renewed strength. And that's what we need to do. We need to pray for one another. We need to care for one another. We need to overlook each other's um, weaknesses and undergird one another through prayer. That is the key for the armor to be fully activated is to pray. That is the key for the armor to um, help us in our times of need. It's prayer. Prayer activates the army, uh, the armor. I'm sorry. <laughs> so just remember that every morning, put the armor on and pray. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna pray. Father God, I just come before you thanking you and praising you, Lord, and asking you, Father God, once again to touch us, Lord, strengthen us, give us what we need for daily living. Lord Jesus, I pray right now that you would help us to recognize 
that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we're wrestling against principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places. We're wrestling against the rulers and the prince of darkness of this age. But Lord, you have said that we can wear the whole armor of God and be protected, be strengthened. Lord, you have said in your word that we can withstand and we can stand in your power and in your might. And so, Lord, I ask for that for those that may be watching tonight or those who may watch the replay. I ask, Father God, that you empower them from on high. Father, that you help them to withstand and stand when they don't know what else to do. Lord, I pray that every believer would put on the belt of truth, that belt of integrity, that belt of walking in the truth and knowing the truth of God, living that truth, Father God. Help us to wear that belt of truth. Help us to live a life of integrity before all men so that we may please you. Father, I pray that you would help us to put on the breastplate of righteousness, which is our holiness, our purity, Lord. Help us to live before you holy and acceptable in your sight. Help us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Father God, I just pray that you would refine us like the refiner's fire. Take us through the fire, Lord, so that we can come out on the other side as pure gold, so that we can be sinless before you, Lord. Father God, remove those things in our lives that, that um, take our eyes off of you, that keep us from our best with you. Father, help us to live holy and pure and righteous lives before you. Father, I pray that our feet, Father God, would wear the shoes of peace wherever we go, that we would walk in peace, that we would be a peaceful people. Father God, that when we walk into the room with our shoes of peace, people will know immediately we're different, we're set apart. We're known by you. Father God, that that peace that passes all understanding would settle on us, so much so that people would come and ask and say, why do you have peace? Why aren't you shaken? And Lord, that I would answer boldly back and say, it is Jesus. He's the one that can speak peace to the storm. He's the one that can calm the seas. He's the one that can bring peace. Father God, I just pray that we would also take up the shield of faith. Lord, that we would cast out every doubt, every anxiety that's not from you. Lord, that that shield would block every fiery dart of doubt that Satan might throw at us. Father God, that those doubts would hit the ground, that they would not come to us. They would bounce off that shield and hit the ground. Father God, I just pray that we would walk around with that shield ready to use it. Father God, I pray that we would take up the helmet of salvation, which is our peace of mind, which is our sanity, our mental health. Father God, I just pray that you would help us to take our thoughts captive, that we would not have any vain imaginations, Lord, but that you would help us, Father God, to just focus on your word and what your word says. That we would not tell ourselves any story, but only the story that comes from you, and that is a story of victory. Father God, that our minds would be stayed on you that we would set our face like a flint towards you, that we would look to you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And Father God, 
more than anything that we would pick up our, our offensive weapon, the word of God, the sword of the spirit. And when Satan comes in, we would have a word back to him from you, from your holy word, a response that defeats the enemy immediately. Lord, help us to hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Help us to be ready to use that word when we need it. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we will condemn because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. That's what the word of God says. No weapon formed against us. No fiery dart hurled at us can have its way because we're protected. We're ready, we're on the offense, we have the word, we have the peace, we have the helmet, the breastplate, the belt of truth, we have the shield of faith, we have it all. Teach us how to pray and use it. Teach us how to pray for our brothers and sisters who are weak, that they may become strong. Teach us how to cover them with prayer, to persevere in prayer and not give up praying for them. Your word says to pray without ceasing, that we would pray without ceasing, Lord. Teach us to pray effective prayers that avail much. Remind us that the secret place with you is where we learn from you, where we get our strength, where we draw near to you. Remind us of all that your son did, but he mostly prayed. He mostly prayed. The Bible says he would often go into the mountains and pray. He would often go on, on a boat and pray. He, he would often be found in quiet, secluded places to pray because that is where he got his strength. That is where he got his strength. Remind us today of how important prayer is, Lord, and help us to not give up praying. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Bless you all. It's good to be here with you all tonight. Yes, Johnson, thank you. It was a word in season. The Lord gave it to me this morning and I'd been kind of meditating on it today and thankful that the Lord is ready with his word, amen. I'm thankful that he chose to use me. Amen. Hallelujah to the highest, to the Lord, to the King. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. I'm excited that you're here with us. Amen, Lynette. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister Joanne. I'm so excited. I see some new faces here tonight. Susan, glad you could be here. Um, Tomorrow, Autumn Temple, you may know her, she's the other Autumn. She will be with us at 1 p.m. So tomorrow's prayer time will be at 1 p.m. Um, so be looking for that. We'll go live at 1 p.m. with Autumn Temple and excited for her to be able to do that. And then the rest of this week, it'll be at 7 p.m. except for Thursday. I got to think about Thursday, but regardless, um, let's um, continue to hold up John 317 in prayer. And actually, I should pray for that right now. So let me do that before I go. And Dr. Linda and Joanne will pray for your granddaughter too. Father God, I'll just lift up John 317 ministry to you. Lord, it's where we're going next week. We're going to minister to women coming out of addictions. I pray that you would use us for your glory, Lord. I pray that you would provide 
all of the finances and resources that we need to go. And Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to help us to walk in your anointing for next week. Help us, Father God, to do your work effectively. And Lord, I just lift up Sister Joanne's um, granddaughter to you, Penelope, who's going through some serious, serious health challenges. Lord, I pray that you would heal the infection in her body. I pray, Father God, that you would prepare her and make her ready for that heart transplant. Father God, you have brought her this far. She is literally a miracle right now that she's alive. And so, Lord, we pray for continued miracles over this baby's life. We just ask you to hover over her. Come with healing in your wings and just rest and overshadow that sweet little baby. Eradicate that infection from her body, O oh Lord. Father God, I pray that you'll make every provision for her, that, that her life will bring you glory and she will have a testimony of your goodness in the land of the living. And so Lord, I pray for little Penelope right now that you would raise her up off of that sick bed and that she, Father God, would be whole and well in Jesus name. Father God, I lift up Dr. Linda Beluga to you who is going overseas for a medical mission to pastors. I just pray that you'll bless her in a mighty way. I pray that you'll meet all of her needs, that you'll make every provision for the medicines that she needs, for the medical equipment that she needs, and that you would give her traveling mercies, and that you would protect the entire team, Father God, that's working in the Philippines in the coming week. And Lord, I just lift up Sister Joanne Auger to you, who will be traveling to Roanoke in the next week to minister there with Sister Sue, Susan Hubbard. And Lord, I just pray that you would use her, you would work in and through her, that you would touch her in a mighty way, and that everything that she says and does at that women's event would bring glory to you and honor to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, sorry, I got off on another tangent. <laughs> but hey, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. So bless you all. And we will see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Take care.